Thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, Kate and I sitting here, we just thought we'd just show you a sort of very quick historical context of where we've been and the places we've been. I mean, one of our first sort of great adventures was a, a very muddy trip to Glastonbury in 1997. And uh, we pitched up there thinking we could do, you know, do the impossible. And of course, the heavens opened and we were up to our neck in mud. Um, and we had two incredible models, one with their child, and it Both was a sort of boyfriends. Armageddon moment. But it also became probably one of my favourite shoots of all time, just because it really did show what is possible when you go with the right people. And I think it's important to say that Tim and his team, you know, they make it possible. They make it so that, you know, all the things that are difficult about travel and all the logistics of traveling and, and sort of going to these sort of far-reaching places is that you need to go with the person who's got that adventurous spirit and wants to go there and wants to discover. And, and that's something that Tim really embraces. He, he is an adventurer on every level. I mean, I think this might sound peculiar to say this at this festival, but clothes can sometimes be boring. Essentially, they're just it's fabric hanging on a coat hanger on a rack. And I think to put them on people in a studio is kind of half the way it could go. But to take clothes on people and then putting them into a location is an extraordinary thing. And it brings, for me, it makes fashion come alive. It, it, and when we're planning these trips, you know, so often Tim will sort of send me a picture on his iPhone of the eagle hunter standing on top of a mountain. He's like, Mongolia. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and that's sort of how it starts. And I'm like, yes, that's so exciting. And then for me, I love, you know, then sort of trawling through all the fashion catwalk images and thinking about all those amazing possibilities of Mongolia. And, uh, and it's, it's such a lovely process to work. And then but, we sort of yeah, build it around that. But I think Mongolia, to say Mongolia, I mean, it is that's what brings fashion alive. That's what puts into a context that, I mean, fashion is all about us dreaming and becoming something, and we all know that, but it, to put it into that, to, to make that dream mm. a thing, is our interpretation of, it's, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's very exciting. I'll go to the next one, I can talk about that. This is the, the model, Kersey, who's leaning against a, a drum and there, there's a young llama who, who we just encountered the, the llama. And um, we're sort of always stitching every, the story mm. together on the hoof. It's always very, you have to be incredibly resourceful and just be, keep your eyes wide mm. open and see, oh, that there's this young guy, he's a llama and he's got the most incredible costume. And then um, it, a butterfly came in and then he put his finger out and the butterfly landed on his finger. Yeah. And it, it's sort of extraordinary sensitivity that maybe only a young llama would have that magnet for the butterfly to land on his finger. Um, I don't know, but we got it. Um, there are these two guys we encountered at a festival. The Nadam Festival. Um, that were, I think, more surprised to see us than we were surprised to see I think, them. I think the yak milk had sort of kicked yeah. in at this point. Yeah. They'd just done one of the big horse races where they sort of tie these tiny children onto horses and then they gallop over the landscape for sort of 23 miles. and. It's a big celebration, but um, no, it was great fun. It was a bit hairy there, though, wasn't it? Yeah, it got a bit, <coughs> got a bit boozy. You know? Got a bit boozy and boisterous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this photograph is, um, again, us keeping our eyes open. And I, uh, Emma, who's my photo assistant, we were out um, taking a picture of a rainbow, I yeah. think. And um, we saw a herd of yaks go past, and I'd never seen a herd of yaks in my life. I couldn't believe how it's like something out of Star Wars. And um, <laughs> Emma and I got very excited, and I ran back to see Kate. I said, Cal, you're not going to believe there's a herd of yaks. Have you got anything that would suit Kersey or the yak? <laughs> Funnily enough, in one of those 20 suitcases. Yeah, luckily, she had a a sort of uh, furry trousers and fur. We, and I can't Kate. even remember. I think it all might be all on upside down, actually, to make it sort of work. I'm not quite sure what it... I think it was a sort of coat. And then yeah. the, the arms of the coat went in their legs. And anyway. Wasn't there... Isn't she wearing a scarf? 
fixed Yeah, and then there was another bit of extra fabric thrown on. But then the funny story is, is that with the herd of yaks, of course, out of the herd of yaks, there was only one yak that Tim wanted. Because so trying to track <laughs> down the one yak, which was the white yak, and of course all the others were brown and black, you know, and it, it then become, and then you think this is, this is the challenge, you know, we have to have the white yak. So you sort of then move mountains and earth, and we were driving Karina who was helping us with the production, we're driving her mad. Yeah. She was going, why, do you, why can't you have any yak? You know, you, getting a yak alone is quite difficult in Mongolia <laughs> to explain you know, what, what you need it for. Oh, yes, we want the girl to sit on it, and nobody actually sits on yaks there. But you always want to keep things on a loose rein so that the pictures are, are living and breathing and not um, suffocated through pushing something too much, um, if that makes sense. I wanted to get... The guy on the left who's from a, a, a sand tribe in Namibia who is with the cheetah and Agnes in the middle. And this photograph is actually an illustration of genuine exhaustion. It's not a, a pose photograph. Agnes was, had sand in her eye and she was, she was over it. She point. was over it. She'd been dragging that suitcase around <laughs> for about an hour at this point. Yeah. So she was well and truly started. I mean, we were all a bit sort of wind battered at this and point. And it was this, this moment when the cheetah was looking at an animal way out in the dunes and it was this sort of serenity in the chaos and Agnes had her back turned the other way and there was, there was a picture and that's how you get them. Mm. It's chaos that makes them. The extraordinary opportunity in the many places in the world one can go to display fashion. I think it's a, a very valuable and important um, seeking out of beauty. That's all it is. It's a seeking out of beauty and it's a fantasy. And, you know, I think Alex, the editor of Vogue, I, I'm just so grateful that she allows us, because looking back at the photographs I've just showed you, I mean, it's her that has um, supported Kate and I to go on all those places. Yeah. And I think an editor... And editors like that, they don't exist so much today. Everyone's so... Things are changing. And I think to, to have that um, delight at publishing photographs that give the reader that sense of adventure is a, is a rare and wonderful thing. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, Alex. But um, I, I think we're going to get everyone up mm. on stage now. So what, what's incredible now is that we've got... the. The photographs that we, when we went to Bhutan earlier in the year, we're going to show you these pictures and talk about them. Um, here's Duffy, the hairdresser. This is the team. This is Sam. So, so Duffy's the hairdresser. Sam does the makeup. Jeff produces everything, so he's the guy in charge of all the. <laughs> feeding us and accommodating us and just the logistics and Flo is the assistant to Kate and Emma is my photographic assistant so on stage now you're looking at the crew that make the photograph Sam you were saying that this actually, the photograph on the left of Karen is that sort of witchy character that was the first photograph yeah. we did because yeah. Yeah. we didn't have a character before this at all and then we like, she looks amazing, witchy poo. Yeah. And that's how the whole idea of her becoming a mystical... Yeah. High and then, priestess. And yeah, then and a bit like, wicker. And yeah. And that was then, the door opened, and then we knew where we were. We mm. knew who she was, yeah. and we could... Yeah. Then, then Kate, to some extent, could pull out the clothes that had that quality or that character was sort of forming. And then... Sam and Duffy could then, it was like, you know, we do the, the wig and the sort of very sort of straw-like hair. Because um, like, I really need a character when I'm working. Because I've got, who is she, who is she? And when yeah. I know who she is, I'm like, OK, and then I can really stick to that. Yeah, I think that's interesting to talk about. We all need, I mean, yeah. whether this makes sense, you, we all need to know who we're portraying. What is the character? Mm -hmm. Is she a, a fantasy, you know, princess? Or is she a, here, she, we wanted to be a, sort of a mystical high Bhutanese pre priestess. <laughs> it's all uh, a load of poppycock, but... Um... And then it's that going, <laughs> as we're taking the pitch, going, I is she that? Is she? What does she need to become that? To yeah. add little bits yeah. to make, it, make mm. her that character. And I think, actually, for Karen, um, as all models I work with, actually, they're the most extraordinary um, actresses. They, they can 
they, they feel it as well. They feel, okay, now I'm this Bhutanese high priestess. And then, uh, and then I can become it. And she then becomes the character that I can't direct through herself. So she's like a, a conduit for yeah. the fantasy in my head. She, she becomes the living thing. That's... What were the... <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to answer that one? <laughs> yeah. So they were drawn everywhere. So it, it, it was just beyond temptation not to take a quick picture. It's a symbol of protection, actually. There's not any sexual connotations at all. It's a, a, in kind of their local Buddhism. There's a, a legend about a monk, a crazy mad monk, who used his... Um, member to protect people from <laughs> evil beings. <laughs> and so they're, they're painted on, on houses everywhere. It's a normal thing to see. Oh, that was Everest. Yeah, and that was, Karen Nelson took that photograph on her iPhone. And I was with my big film camera trying to get a picture of it. And she just leaned forward, pushed me out of the way, took the picture. <laughs> and, and then she, got she the went best like one. that. We've all got like this that. one as our screensaver. And then she it? said, look, and it was like way better than I could do. But... <laughs> I think that's, that's it. it. <laughs>